the phenomenon called enlightenment enlightenment is not the result of any cause if it is the result of a cause enlightenment is conditional this in fact enlightenment is a phenomenon beyond all conditioning enlightenment means unconditioning in the mind our mind is conditioned by our ideas by our ideas opinions experiences beliefs and so on our normal mind is conditioned the mind is full of prejudices that is why it is said in the karnami sutra at the end dit dittincha anupagamma silava dasanen sampanno see unconditioned free from prejudices if nirvana is a result of a cause it can be caused in describing nirvana buddha said one quality is akata it cannot be done akata means not done it cannot be done it is not done ajata it is not something born new because he has found out whatever that is born is subject to decay and death nirvana is free from that they are called asankata it is not form <clears throat> it is our original nature original state enlightenment is the base of our mind the nirvana is at the base of our mind that is our original mind that original mind is covered by our thinking and feeling our uh, mental images all mental images are illusions they appear to be real but they are not actually real only reality is the nirvana at the base of our mind the unconditional original mind when all thought forms all images created by the mind come to an end when the mind becomes empty of its content the content of our mind is nothing but our thinking our thoughts and feelings what happened to buddha at the enlightenment he mentioned in his first pian of joy saying visankara gatan chitta the formation of thoughts thinking the thinking process came to an end got extinct enlightened they do not think our mind has two major activities one is thinking that is that is done deliberately and other is sensing sensing means knowing the signal sent by sensory organs senses regarding their experiences even the enlightened mind has that knowing capacity and it is called sanya vedaita sanya means signal sent by the sense organs vedaita is knowing but it is free from knowledge knowing is now here and now it is an actual reality at the moment knowledge is information we have gathered in the past past is dead our knowledge is dead there are corpses in the burial ground the burial ground is our past there are 
only memories, the information. And that information is not the correct information because we get the information through our sense organs. And no sense organs is capable of knowing the reality of anything. The eye cannot know, see everything. They can see atoms or subventricular particles. Our ears, they cannot hear a lot of waves, sound waves, mobile waves, TV waves, radio waves. They cannot. They are limited. Our nose cannot smell even what a dog can smell. The capacities of our sense organs are limited. Therefore, the information supplied by them to our mind is defective. And that information gets recorded in our memory cells as our knowledge. Knowledge is defective, imperfect. Knowledge is nothing but ignorance. We think that we know, but really we don't know. We don't know the reality. And that is called ignorance. In Pali, it is called moha. Nirvana is beyond all that accumulated knowledge, ideas, opinions, and so on, what fill our mind. They are all defilements. They defile the mind. Whether it's a good thought or a bad thought, they defile the mind. We want to be good because we have a desire for that. Desire is a defilement, mental defilement. We do good, thinking good, because we have decided to be good and to do good and make our mind good. And all based on the idea of our self. Self is an illusion, according to the Buddha. Thus, enlightenment means the end of all knowledge, not only knowledge, but even wisdom. After enlightenment, nothing wrong is done. No wrong ideas get formed in our mind. Therefore, we don't want wisdom to direct us. It becomes redundant. No more wisdom is needed. Therefore, that type of enlightenment is called Panya Vimutti, freedom from wisdom. The other type is called freedom from mind. Cheto Vimukti. No more thinking. We had to calculate, reason out, rationalize to come to a correct conclusion. Because very often our mind goes wrong. The enlightened do not use knowledge or thinking process to do the right and to avoid the wrong. They do no more wrong after enlightenment. Therefore, both knowledge and wisdom become redundant, not wanted, not useful. They can see things as they are. That is called Yata Bhuta Jnana Dasana. And their mind is beyond space and time. Not only thing here, everything. Here or far away. Far away in time or in space. They see as it is here. That is called Ehi Pasiko, seeing here. Sandhitiko, seeing it now. What happened billions of years ago? The enlightened mind can see as it is happening here. Even scientists have found out space and time dimensions are illusions. And they have found out there is no space and time in a back core. This space and time started functioning only after the Big Bang according to the scientific view. The original actual nature is the only reality in us and that is Nirvana. It is an eternal truth. It is called Asankata because in Buddha's words, 
Upadur Panyati, there is no birth, it is not a new birth. Vayo no Panyati, it doesn't decay. Titasa Anyatata no Panyati, does not get transformed, does not get changed. Our ideas are constantly changing. Our mind is constantly changing. Our body is constantly changing. Everything in this universe is dynamic. The reality, the ultimate reality is within us. And that is nothing but Nirvana. And Nirvana is not the result of our thought process or not the result of any process of activities, even it is not the result of meditation. In a commentary called Saratta Saratta Pakasani, made by Reverend Buddha Gosa, he has commented on uh, Buddha's discourse called Susima Sutta that comes on page 188, as far as I remember, uh, Susima Sutta, and uh, on Sanghuti Nikaya, Volume 2. <clears throat> Commenting on that, Reverend Buddha Gosa says, Nirvana or enlightenment is not the result of Buddhist meditation, not the result of transcendental meditation, not the result of a trance that one arrives at in meditation. It's not that meditation is bad or useless, it becomes very useful, but enlightenment cannot be caused by translating Gentle meditation. That is why it is called Akata. Abhuta, it is not a happening. It is, happenings are waves. Things happen one after the other, but this is not a thing that is happening. It is not born. Things born are subject to decay and death. Asangata, it is not formed by collecting other things that are available. It is not a formation, a sankata. It is the ultimate reality in us. And you cannot achieve enlightenment by any effort, mental or physical effort. You can do good things mentally, verbally, and physically, and you can acquire merits, but that doesn't mean you become enlightened by all those good activities of mind, words, and deeds. Enlightenment is not the result of any activity, any process of mental or physical activities. And nobody knows when one would get enlightened. It is an instant phenomenon. For example, Buddha's closest disciple was called Reverend Ananda. He was wanted for the first council collecting Buddha's teaching and Reverend Ananda knew all the preachings of the Buddha he had such a powerful memory. It was a living computer and he was asked to get enlightened. And on the day, on the night before the first council, he started meditating. And he was meditating while walking in all the four postures. He got fully tired mentally and physically. And early morning he thought of lying down. And when he sat on his bed and tried to lie down, without even lying down, he could enlighten suddenly. That is the 
he was the only enlightened one who got enlightened without any other four postures that is sitting, standing, walking and lying down. He was not sitting, he was not lying down, he was trying to lie down and got enlightened. Even the Arahant, Lady Arahant called Patachara got enlightened according to her statement in the Therigata. He was worried about the death of his parents in old age, death of his brothers and sisters in the middle age, death of her children in the childhood. And before going to bed, she washed her feet. When she put water once into the feet, it went down into the ground and soaked into the ground. Second time when she, when she put water, it went further. Third time it went further. Meditating on that, thinking of that, she went to the bed and blew out the lamp to go to sleep. As soon as she was blowing out the lamp, she got enlightened, suddenly. There are number of instances in the Buddhist canon where some disciples got enlightened by committing suicide at the last breath. There is a disciple called Godika. He got enlightened by cutting down his neck with a razor blade and at his last breath and Reverend Vakkali, another monk, got enlightened by cutting down his neck at the last breath. There is another monk called Channa. He also got enlightened by cutting down his neck at the last breath. There is a monk called Sarpadasa, Sarpadasa and in his uh, statement in Therigata he says, when she put the blade onto her neck, he got enlightened. There is another statement made by a lady Arahant called Siha, Siha Theri, in the Theri Gata. She wanted to hang down, kill herself, commit suicide by hanging down. He made a knot and put it on the neck and when she tried to tighten it, she got enlightened. There's a st uh, story regarding another monk called Chulla Pantaka. He was just rubbing a piece of cloth, looking at the sun, and that cloth got dirty, and he realized the truth of life the dirt in life, and he got enlightened. There is another story regarding another monk called Swarnakarika. Swarnakarika was a pupil under Reverend Sariputta. For four months, he was meditating on the impurities of body, but he didn't get to it into a trance. He was taken by Reverend Sari Buddha to the Buddha and Buddha, by miraculous power, manifested a lotus and asked him to look at the lotus. When he got fully concentrated on lotus, Buddha, by miraculous power, made the lotus to be down. By realizing the reality of life, that everything is the anitya dukkha natata, everything is born to decay, even the beautiful flower. He realized the truth of life and got enlightened. Enlightenment is not the result of any thinking, not the result of any meditation. That doesn't mean thinking is useless. 
meditation is useless. They become very helpful. In fact, the Buddha got enlightened because he was trying for nearly seven years to get enlightened according to the practices in India available at that time, he couldn't. That, that was called self-mortification, starving the senses. He was really enjoying sensual pleasures in the palace. He left it, finding no permanent happiness in sensual enjoyments, and he found no enlightenment in self-mortification, starving the senses. Then after his last meal before enlightenment, there is a report that he sat under the Bodhi tree never to get up. With the meditation, let my body decay and enter the soil. That means he had given up the effort, the, uh, if the desire to get enlightened. And he got enlightened unexpectedly. Enlightenment happens unexpectedly when you are really matured. It's like the flowering of a tree. You can't force the tree to flower. Similarly, you can't force any plant to flower. At the correct season, under the correct environment, under the correct maturity, it gets automatically blossomed. It is the automatically blossom of one's own mind that we call enlightenment. It happens automatically, instantly, without any process of thinking and without any process of meditation, without any process of physical activities, without doing anything. To do something, there must be effort, there must be need to do it, the desire to do it, the idea of a self in it. Therefore, such doing can never result in enlightenment. It is not a happening, as I said earlier, Abhuta, not a happening, because it is the eternal nature in us. What is the eternal nature? The pure mind, Sachitta Pariyodapanam, that is a purify the mind. Purify the mind means our mind is filled with defilement. What are defilements? Our thoughts. Both good thoughts and bad thoughts are based on our motives, based on our desires, based on our intentions, based on our psychological needs, based on our physical needs. Enlightenment is not satisfying any need. End of all needs, end of all desires is enlightenment. And that is our original state. In our original nature, we are already enlightened. What happens at the enlightenment is the discovery, opening up that, that is the blossoming. Nirvana is in us, we had, it has to be opened up. It gets opened up when all the defilements, mental defilements covering the supreme bliss is removed. That, is, that happens when thinking stops. Thinking stops because we think of likes and dislikes and what we don't know, they are called raga, those more, when they are extinct, when our mind becomes vita ragi, vita dosi, vita mohi, the mind is not thinking anymore. When thinking ceases, there's nothing more as a content in our mind. The mind becomes free of all content, all covering, and original mind comes up. It comes up automatically in a moment that we never expect. Whenever you expect something, you cannot get, you can't expect to be enlightened. All expectations have to vanish to be enlightened. And it happens 
in a moment that you never expect, when the mind is free from all expectations, it happens automatically. We cannot say it is happening, it's a manifestation, it is inexplicable phenomenon. 